and then we'll be happy to be with everybody on the Facebook page. All right, we should be there now. Hello, Romy. Hello, Jochen. <laughs> and hello, everybody. Thanks for joining in here at our Facebook Live interview with Romy, who is calling in from Melbourne, getting up really early to be with us. Thank you, Romy. <laughs> Such a pleasure. The best excuse to wake up at six in the morning. <laughs> Great. Well, you look bright and shiny. So <laughs> <laughs> thanks for joining in today. Uh, it's, it's a total delight to start our new theme that we have here uh, in the Bright community and on, on the Balanced View online training platform with relationships, empowering, challenging relationships. And you kindly volunteered to be <laughs> our first guest here in, the, in our interview series. So it's beautiful that you're with us. And I already see that uh, we get thumbs up here. Can you all hear us well? Is everything looking fine? Just let us know in the comment section and by giving us a thumbs up. And then we're ready to launch into the conversation we're having here. We'd also always love to hear where you're calling from. So leave a comment if you'd like to let us know where you're calling in from. And any questions you have while Romy and I are talking together, just post them in the comment section and then we will integrate this into the conversation that we're having. So just post there right away. And uh, any question you have about any kind of relationships that you'd like to empower, any challenges you have, we've seen it all and we will be so happy to share our experience. Uh, hello, Dan is from Amsterdam. I see some people joining here from Sweden, from Israel, uh, the United States. Wonderful. Welcome to you all. All right. So, Romy, let's just launch right in there. Uh, the topic is empowering challenging relationships. Uh, obviously, being a human being, relationships <laughs> have been a part of your life as well. Um, how, how was that for you? What, what were your challenging relationships and uh, give us some of the juicy details. <laughs> um, yeah, thank you, Jochen. It was, for me, um, this is one of my favourite topics, relationships, because I've seen so directly um, the difference of what has happened to me from before I did the 12 empowerments to afterwards. And uh, the, the probably the standout most challenging relationships for me was my intimate relationships because I would get into relationships and I'd have so much positive data and it usually lasted about a year. So conventionally when I was in the relationships, I thought I'm really good at this. Like <laughs> I last a whole year and I had many, many long-term year relationships, but it was pretty much after about a year all of the data, the positive data started to change and I started to experience doubt and question, is this person for me? I'm not sure. Maybe there's somebody better out there. I don't think I feel so attracted to him anymore. I feel like I, I need somebody a bit more like this, a little less like that. And I just had all of the data just started to get more and more intense and this was just such a pattern that always happened. And um, so, of course, my solution was like, all right, I've got to end the relationship. I've hit my year. It's time to find that man that's going to give me positive data for the rest of my life. And um, so that was it. I was just on the search to find the one, the person who was going to give me the most positive data. And, of course, I never found that. And every single time I... Um, got into this blissful relationship it always had to end because the data just got too intense and I just couldn't handle it anymore and I didn't know what to do and so the only way that I could find relief was just to leave the situation and start again so this was um how mm. I yeah 
uh, you got so many. You, I don't know if you can see this, but there were tons of hearts popping up there. <laughs> <laughs> I think people people could really relate with what you were saying. I definitely can relate. For me, it usually didn't take a year to arrive at that place um, where you suddenly have, have these insights that all the things you thought were perfect about this other person, <laughs> they suddenly aren't so perfect anymore. Uh, so... Yeah, like what what was the impact this has had on your life? Like how 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 did that make you feel about yourself, about life, about just I mean, hearing it from you so succinctly and so so concisely, um, was this dynamic clear to you? And and if so, how how did that make you feel? What did you try to other than leaving the relationship? Were there other things that you've tried to like make it work or? Yeah. How, how did that look for you? So I've always been um, interested in, in the search and I had heard many times on the search that the relationship starts with myself and that it's very, in order to have good relationships with other people, that it's important to have good relationships with myself. So I kind of could see vaguely, probably not as clearly as I can see now, but I could see vaguely the air that something like this was happening. And I knew that there was lots of data that I felt very uncomfortable with about myself. And so I, I thought that in order to love myself, in order to harmonise the relationship with myself, I needed to get rid of that ne negative data that I felt uncomfortable with um, so that I could find love so that I could be in a happy, healthy relationship, so that I could love myself, so that I could thrive in life. I needed to love my data, which I thought meant I needed to have only positive data. So I tried many things. I went to India for a year and um, I tried meditation and I probably tried everything. Everything that came my way, I tried it. <laughs> Tell us a few more things. This is the interesting part. <laughs> I tried. Well, I did like I did a 10 day meditation retreat and um, that was that was kind of a bit torturous. But I was like really motivated to go through it because I thought, well, in the end, I'm going to love myself. and I'm going to be able to have better relationships with everybody and lead a better life. So I did that. And that was um, in the end of that retreat. That was great, except a couple of weeks later, it required me to just keep on meditating. And a couple of weeks later in my regular everyday life, I just realized that it's just not something that I'm ever going to do in my, in my life. And so then, of course, all of the negative data and everything just goes crazy and I have no solution. I have no practical solution that I can just bring about right now when the negative data is there. And I tried... Um, I tried some very funny different techniques of running around in circles and screaming out and being in the nature and um, <laughs> different types of retreats and <laughs> spent lots of money, drew out my anxiety, made like crazy artwork, like where I could like draw my anxiety and then put it on a wall and be like, there it is. I'm not going to have it anymore because I've gone through this process and and it's over there now, it's not here. And just um, I really, really, really tried so hard to make the negative data go away and nothing that I did um, could do that, of course. <laughs> mm. Yeah, that, that sounds, it reminds me a lot of myself. <laughs> Thank you for sharing all these things. Uh, and also it sounds really, it sounds stressful and painful. Uh, now, you've mentioned the 12 empowerments a couple of times. I don't know that everybody who is here with us today would know what that is. Can you share a little? Like, obviously, uh, it, it, it is, well, maybe not obviously, but it is a foundational training in, in Balanced View. It's 12 empowerments. It's usually 12 days or for, it's like 12 chapters, 12 empowerments. Um, what happened for you? What was like your key insight or your key insights that then changed this dynamic for you. Um, how long have you been together with your current uh, partner? 
<laughs> Let's first talk about the result. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years. 10 years. So <laughs> 10 times the time that it was a, it was uh, possible for you before. So how did that come about? What happened? What was it that like made this change possible for you? Well, we were together um, for approximately about, we, we actually were together for about two years before I went to India. So we had one good year and then one year of hell. But I was like, I cannot just end this relationship again because I know what's going to happen. Like, is there really somebody better out there? But I just, it was like I was doomed both ways. If I stay with him, I was suffering from the data and if I leave him I was also suffering because I I loved him so much but I just couldn't be with him because the data was so intense but um, the data just led me to leave because it was so intense and so I went to India and um, and when I was there I did the 12 empowerments and instantly like after probably day three um, I I realized what self-love is and I realized that all of the data that was coming up, all of the negative data about my relationship, that that was that I had the opportunity to rely on open intelligence with that data and see that it is like a rainbow in the sky and that and then I, that was really revolutionary for me because I really thought that there was something so solid about the data that it had a power to affect me and that I had to make it go away. But as I went through the 12 empowerments, I started to see that that data, it was just, it was nothing. It was just the expression of me. And I was given the tools and the support to just get really comfortable with it. And when I'm really comfortable with it, and when I realize that it's just air in air, then I don't need to do anything to make it go away. And so I realized, wow, I can just have all of this data and it's not, it doesn't actually mean that I'm in the wrong relationship. Like just because I experience doubt, I can just allow that to be as it is and rely on open intelligence and I can still be in a really loving relationship and so what I used to do was I used to blame my partner oh it's his fault he needs to change he needs to do that he needs to be more like that but then the empowerments really clearly showed me that oh, it's just that is just not it and I realized that the, re the relief that instant relief that that provided me in realizing that wow I'm not I don't need to be led but like a puppet on a string anymore. I actually have a choice with who I want to be with. And I can, I can choose who to be with, like who is going to support, who, who is going to support my lifestyle to rely on open intelligence, who is, who is going to empower me, who, who do I want to be with, who do I want to choose to be with for the rest of my life. That's my choice. I don't have to go with somebody just where the data is positive. And so then it was very clear to me when I came back from um, doing the 12 empowerments that I could be, go back to that relationship and just be like, we can be in relationship now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so beautiful. So Dan was the man after all. Dan was the man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure he was happy that you did the 12 empowerments. Yeah, he was happy. <laughs> <laughs> that is so wonderful. And it's it's so counterintuitive to everything that we've learned that you can have negative. And just in case anybody listening in today or watching this doesn't know what data are, we just use the term data as a uh, a collective word for all the thoughts, emotions, sensations, basically all the things that, that appear in it as your own intelligence, just like all the images in the mirror. Um, appear in the equalness and evenness of the mirror so too all the experiences we have as human beings are reflections in of as and through open intelligence so it's it's really interesting what you're sharing that you no longer depended on the kinds of data of thoughts and emotions that you have in order to inform your decisions um, i 
I assume that an interesting question is then, well, then how do you make decisions? Because we're so driven, like usually people make decisions. We have learned to make decisions that lead to a positive like experience. Like we, we are with somebody that we like and that we feel good or we eat food that we like and it tastes good or, um, you know, that we think is nutritious. If, if, if you no longer make decisions based on these constant stream of thoughts and emotions, then what is your compass? What is, how, how do you make these decisions in life? Well, it's a great question because decisions used to be a really big affliction for me. I just did not know how to make decisions because every decision I was searching for um, positive data. And, um, and so relying on open intelligence has been the most incredible, incredible, profound teaching for me because I see that when I rely on open intelligence, I'm infused with what is going to be of most benefit and I just know exactly what to do and what is going to be of most benefit in every moment and um and so I feel like I don't even have to make decisions anymore like whereas previously I felt really afflicted about many decisions that happened all of the time whereas now it's just it just is really obvious what to do and what is going to be what is going to be best and um and it's just it's so it's such a relief and it's so nice to live like that where I don't need to question everything anymore and wonder and then speak to everybody about should I be in this relationship should I not be in relationship and talk with all my friends about it or what do you think about that person what do you think about that person I just I'm just the natural intelligence, open intelligence just informs my speech, my actions, my qualities and activities. And there's just clarity everywhere. So decisions basically are obvious. They make themselves because it's yeah. just obvious to you what's the right thing to do. Mm. That sounds like just another relief. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so uh, let's go back to your, you, you came back from India, you had done the 12 empowerments, you told your uh, former then again boyfriend, I'm ready for you now. Um, <laughs> how did that look? Like, does that mean you never got angry anymore? Does that mean that you, um, you know, that you never blew your top or, or how did that that process of integration go you mentioned before that in the 10-day retreat you also had a nice time and you felt more I think I don't know if you said peaceful but it sounded like you felt peaceful and equanimous and then um, but then like after two weeks you realized you know this you would have to do this for the rest of your life and the relationship so how how was this different how how did that happen how was that process of integration for you uh, yeah. Yeah. So um, it was it was it was definitely a gradual process. So um, all when I went back into my my relationship, all of the same data came up. The same data about wanting him to change, wishing he was different, wondering if he was the one, and everything. However what is so brilliant about balanced view and what I'd, I'm just so completely grateful for every single day is that balanced view provides me with the four mainstays. And so that means that I'm never alone and I don't have to deal with any of this really intense affliction by myself. So what happened was the way that I dealt with it just changed. The data didn't change. The way that I dealt with it changed. So instead of we used to every night or every few nights, we'd sit down before we went to bed and just talk about what he needed to do that was different and what I needed to do that was different. That was just like our constant conversation and constantly, constantly, constantly trying to work on the relationship. But then once I was using the four mainstays, um, I instead of going to him and telling him about what he needed to do to change, I started to write to my trainer or I'd listen to talks all day 
or I'd, I actually got a job where I was able to just spend time and just listen to talks for as long as I could because I knew that this would just really, really help me to gain confidence in this practice and I knew that it was the most important thing in the world. And, um, yeah, I'd listen to write to my trainer and, um, and join calls online. <clears throat> and, um, and so this... This just magically opened up our relationship without us working on everything, especially developing this really great relationship with my trainer. And instead of talking to him about everything, I'd write to her about everything. And so initially that was a bit weird because I used to talk to him about all of my problems and all of my data, but it actually opened up the relationship in such a beautiful way because no longer did I use our relationship as a dumping ground where I would just like go (laughs) and tell him all of my negative data. (laughs) I'd do that with my trainer. I'd clarify it. I'd find peace there, relying on open intelligence. And then when I was with um, my partner, we could just have fun and enjoy ourselves. And, you know, the first thing I noticed was that I just started to laugh so much with him. We just, we just... I realized that he makes me laugh more than anybody else I know. And I never realized that before. (laughs) I was so caught up in what was wrong that I just never realized how funny he was. So that was fun. (laughs) (laughs) That is so good. That is so good. So um, you mentioned it was a gradual process. We we had a post in the Bright community. I don't know if you've seen it already, but there was uh, a, a beautiful share or in the 12 Empowerments Facebook group um, about a participant who shared that he had this like argument um, with with uh, his partner. And so wonder like, how was that for you? Did you never have arguments anymore or did they just not last as long did they or what was you know in these like situations that come up for like all of us who are in relationships how how was that practically like I don't know if you have an example I always have this one example in mind where Kati as you know my wife is also a psychologist and so she um she uh she and I used to do exactly what you shared we used to talk about our negative um data and like trying to see what's wrong and what's the cause and what can we do to not make each other feel this way and so forth. And then I remember this one time where we sat across each other and we were like, we were getting ready to get into this. And then we both in the same time at the same moment realized we could as well just relax for a short moment. And we looked at each other and we burst out laughing. <laughs> and, and that was just, it, it's just such a marked difference because we could have spent the rest of the night talking about this issue. And then I often, like by the time we were done talking, I didn't even remember how we started talking and what was wrong in the first place. It just became bigger and bigger. Um, and so that was just one of these events in, in my own experience with, with the intimate relationship, um, that, that I feel very fortunate to have. Was there something like this for you? Were there like examples of maybe arguments that, that had a different, a different trajectory or or situations that look differently? Um, yeah, I actually have one example. It's a bit, little bit, um, similar and we, we used to go for this specific walk all of the time. And pretty much every time we used to go on that walk, we used to have an argument. And, um, and then um, did the 12 empowerments. We went on the same walk again. And um, we, he started telling me something that for some reason, I don't even know what it was, but for some reason it brought up so much anger in me. I was so angry, I was fuming, and I could see my choice in that moment that I could take a short moment or I could just react to the anger, which is what I really wanted to do. I wanted to react to the anger. and (laughs) But I thought, okay, I'm going to test out short moments here. I'm going to really test it out. And he was just talking, like we were just on a walk and he was just talking and I was like, all right, I'm going to test out short moments in my mind. He didn't know any of this was going on. And I let the anger go wild. 
I really allowed myself to feel immense, immense hatred and anger that I'd never allowed myself to feel before because that always felt like you're not allowed to hate somebody who you love that much. Like that's not, that's not allowed. And, um, but I just let everything be exactly as it is and went, everything went wild and took short moments, relied on open intelligence. And as we carried on walking and he was talking, I just instantly noticed that all of the data just started to fall away. Nothing felt solid anymore. And open intelligence just shone through. And I saw, wow, my whole life, I saw, wow, that, that anger that I've been acting out on my whole life, I could have just carried it on acting that out. And instantly that short moment that I took in that moment, it changed my experience of anger forever because I experienced the true nature of that anger in that moment. And it just disappeared like a line drawn in water. And I just looked at him afterwards and I just felt so much love so much love and so much compassion for myself for the way that I had been acting out that anger my whole entire life and so much gratitude for short moments that just right then and then just ended a behavioral pattern so yeah Mm, wow that gives me goosebumps (laughs) um thank you for sharing sharing so intimately this is yeah this is this is so powerful um so if you haven't if, if anybody here is joining in who hasn't um had an introduction to open intelligence uh to know what we're talking about this is actually not something that you have to get somewhere like go to india or get from a book or do anything like that it's really it's your own natural intelligence which is looking through your eyes the intelligence that has always been you. It hasn't been your intelligence. You are that intelligence that's looking, that's that's thinking, that's uh, doing everything. And, and a really easy way to identify that intelligence is to just stop thinking for a moment. And what remains? You can recognize a, a sense of clarity of alertness of of naked alertness maybe peace and that is always that is who you are and and that is always present and uh the the here here it is i i have this one here on my desk because it's such a good metaphor so we're all our data are like reflections in a crystal ball and we've just been trained and we used, we, we deepened that training all our life to only ever focus on the reflections. We've never recognized the lucid, bright clarity of the crystal ball of our own mind of intelligence itself. And so with the introduction where we identify the direct experience of open intelligence, we then have a choice to either focus on the data, just like we've always done, sorting them into positive, neutral, negative, and then trying to push away the negative, holding to the positive, or we simply relax and rest as open intelligence. And in that resting, in that natural resting, there is complete perceptual openness in all experience. So we don't hold to all the different perceptions like this grasping and the pushing, and there's just openness of perception. And uh, just like what you've described so beautifully, where you allowed all the anger that came up from nowhere, instead of analyzing, where does it come from? Why do I have it? What's wrong with me? What's wrong with him? Just allowing it to be as it is. And you recognize, wow, there's nothing I need to do. It's like amazing. Um, I remember when I had a lucid dream, it was a bit like that. When you when you just see, wow, there's all this. This looks like a real world, but actually it's not. <laughs> and so when you live by, by just your data streams for your entire life and you suddenly realize I don't have to do that anymore. It is like waking up, um, waking up from a dream that we didn't even know we're, we're, we're dreaming. So that is uh, very powerful. Um, 
Now, you also, if we fast forward a bit, this was 10 years ago. Um, you now are also a Balanced View trainer. Um, hmm. We're so happy to have you on the team, obviously, having had the profound experiences and insights that you've had. I know one of your passions is relationships. Uh, and is there any, like, are there any tips that you would like to share uh, with somebody who is new to this? Um, we will later post a link in this thread so that you know where you can do a brief introductory training and also can join the Bright uh, Facebook group, which is our group uh, for supporting people who are really new. So you can ask any question without feeling, you know, maybe that's a stupid question or something. It's just really made for you. But in addition to those two things, Romy, if somebody says, you know, this sounds really familiar to me, like the things you've shared about you and your relationships in, in life, um, are there are there any tips, suggestions that you would like to give? Um, well, I think that the only um, way in which I was able to experience the uh, relief that I experience now and to be able to harmonize um, the relationship with myself so that I could have a harmonious relationship with my partner and my family and friends and everybody else um, was through using the four mainstays and really, really using them in a way that uh, was, was good for me at, at the time and, and that always changes the way that I use the four mainstays like sometimes it might just be that I listen to talks all day every day or sometimes it might just be that I'm in really close touch with my trainer but um, I could not have done it without the four mainstays otherwise it would have just been another intellectual concept that uh that I would have, you know, done the 12 empowerments and gone, oh, yeah, that's great. I get that. Yep, it's harmonising the relationship with myself and that sounds great and I really agree with everything that I heard and amazing. And, um, and, and then I would have just gone out again and just been on my own. But using the four mainstays is what made it my experience. And, um, and I actually did have a point after I left the 12 empowerments um, where my computer broke and I lost my phone and I was just completely did not use the four mainstays. And, and I noticed that um, taking short moments became a mental construct and I didn't really, I kind of started to develop my own idea of what short moments were. But then as soon as I wrote that email to um, my trainer, she just clarified it right then and there. And I just knew exactly how to take a short moment. So this is my pretty much one and only tip is use the four mainstays. <laughs> and, uh, and I also actually have another idea is that Dan and I are taking a four day introductory training coming up. And, um, and so you just love to hear about relationships and ask more questions about that, then you're welcome to join. <laughs> what a great idea. Um, I, I didn't know you had that plan. That's, that's perfect. Um, be sure to post the link in the, in the comment section there so yeah. that people can, can find out more about that. Um, and if you don't know what the four mainstays are, we, we have an empowerment, a support structure in Balanced View that we call the four mainstays. And they're like, four mainstays like the four legs of a chair and there the first is a short moments of open intelligence practice a simple practice that you can integrate into every single aspect of life that's one of the things i really love about this practice is i don't i i went on retreats as well um and i love about short moments that you can practice them anywhere it's like a the the miniest mini meditation possible and it's always authentic and it's real instead of trying to contrive something anyway so that's the first uh, mainstay the short moments practice and then we have loads of media and trainings on the balance view website and on facebook and on other platforms and then thirdly we have balance view trainers certified trainers who are available to support and who are really happy to hear from you and be in touch and 
with the 12 empowerments also we select a primary trainer who we then have this relationship with it that you shared before where instead of dumping our data on all the people that we actually love we clarify and empower them so we don't dump them on the trainer we actually bring them up in this relationship which is always held in that amazing space of where i know like i know if i write my trainer an email just in that in even writing, I have written so many emails I didn't send or I then deleted because it, I clarified everything just by putting myself in that space of writing an email to my trainer from the pers- because naturally I could see what, what, what their advice would be. It's amazing how, how, this, how this learning process works. It's like integrating and assimilating on such a deep level. So uh, the short moments practice, the training and the media and the trainers and then the worldwide community. Um, so just like we have uh, in different cities around the world or in our centers in Sweden and in India, or now also on Facebook, the different communities. So your advice is to basically immerse yourself um, in whatever way fits and in whatever way is supportive at this time and the only addition i would make is you don't just like rely on the mainstays as some other thing in fact by doing that we become an active contributor like i've heard so many people ask questions and i thought that's brilliant because i kind of had the same question and then by one person asking it there is an amazing response that comes from somewhere and then we can all benefit from it. So even by asking questions, we actually contribute uh, beneficially and powerfully to the to the community. So it's a very um, reciprocal, if that's a word, process, and just uh, so much fun to be with people who really reflect that back to us instead of reflecting all the data and you need to change, you need to do this, you need to do to to be this way they just see the brightness of open intelligence um, in, inseparable from all the data that might be going on for us. So that was a nice invitation. I hope that many people will follow your call and to join, join the intro training. Uh, what, what time is it? When, when is it happening? It is um, happening on October the 15th. And is it uh, Australia morning, evening, or what? What time it's is it? For, it's for uh, Europe, and oh, great, good. For Europe so and Australia, Europe and Australia, perfect. Yeah, and it is at um, eleven. Th- it's on Tuesdays and Thursdays at eleven thirty a.m. to one thirty p.m. CET, and eight thirty till 10 30 p.m in australia hooray good that sounds like fun and having both of you there (laughs) what a perfect opportunity to ask questions about this topic all right we went a bit over time uh we had a few more topics actually uh that we will tie into our next conversation uh, which will actually already be on Tuesday with Sonia Omar, who is uh, also a long-term participant in Balanced View and will focus on uh, empowering relationships at work, and uh, which we also always have uh, questions about, like, how can, I, how can I bring open intelligence into conflictual situations at work, whether with boss or colleagues or clients or um, whatever those relationships will be. So we hope to see you there again. Thanks so much today for joining us, Romy. That was so much fun. Oh, I just love uh, speaking with you and seeing you. What you said before about Dan, that he makes you laugh. It's just like, that's just, you shine that so brightly in everything you, you share. So thank you for being with us today. Thank you so much, Jochen. Thank you, everybody. It was just a pleasure to talk about this. I love it. Thank you. <laughs> Great. See you again soon. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>